it costs $100 to build this project. That is the capex that's going to be spent. And the project will last exactly one year. And at the end of the year, we can sell that project and all of the benefit it has generated for $109. So there's a $9 baked in profit. And let's say that that project has been funded with an unlevered capital structure. It's been funded with no debt. So it's been funded with zero debt and $100 in equity. So on exit, one year from now, when we sell that project, we receive a profit of $9, right? 109 minus 100 that was invested. And we didn't borrow any money. And so how would we calculate the return on equity for that? We would look to the $9 profit as the numerator. And the denominator, what do we divide it by? The total amount of equity that was invested, 100. So 9 divided by 100 tells us that there would be a 9% return on equity for this investment, for an equity investor, if the project is unlevered. By comparison, if the project was levered, let's say we borrowed $60 in debt and funded this project with only 40 in equity to pay for the full 100 million or $100 in CapEx, this is what it might look like. We face that same $9 of profit on exit, and by that I mean after the debt has received its full repayment of its 60, and the equity has received its money back, its 40, we've got the same nine in profit. But at this point in time, you gotta remember, we borrowed money. So let's just say that the interest rate on that $60 was a 5% interest rate, meaning over the course of the year, we have $3 in interest expense that needs to be repaid. So we got $9 in profit on, interest, uh, on exit, less $3 of interest expense, gives us $6 that's available to be distributed to equity. So what's our return to equity? It's the $6 that can be distributed divided by the amount of equity that was invested, 40. Six divided by 40 is a 15% return on equity. So now, can you see the power of leverage? I just took an investment that delivers a 9% return, and I borrowed some money at a relatively modest interest rate at 5%, which meant I invested less of my own money, and I was able to turn that 9% investment into a 15% return on equity, which is way higher than I would have received if there was no debt. So in the next module, what we'll talk about is how to use Excel to quantify the financial returns to an equity investor from a more complicated set of cash flows that doesn't just last a single year. And we'll be using concepts of net present value, or NPV, and internal rate of return, or IRR.